Now we'll talk about computing the expected value and variance of continuous random variables. So this is essentially for continuous, okay? Not discrete. We've already seen the discrete random variable case. We will only look at continuous random variables. All right. So we are going to do this by talking about the mean first, and then we will uh, spend the next slide talking about the variance. So by definition, the expected value of the continuous random variable is given by this. Sometimes we also write this as the expected value of x is the integral from negative infinite to infinite x times the PDF, little f of x times dx. Now, I do not want to keep jumping in the PDF and the CDF, so I tend to write everything in terms of the CDF because the rest of the course is probably going to be mostly CDF oriented, but this is, these two are basically equivalent, okay? So that is how we define the expected value. Mathematically, this is very similar to what we had before the summation x times the probability that x equals little x. So this was in the case of discrete, okay? In the case of discrete, it looks very similar. The continuous, again, same situation. And this guy is the, the f of x times dx is the same as the probability that the random variable x is between x and x plus dx, if you will. So if you sum over all values, it is the same flavor. So you know, in some sense, we are talking about the same thing. We are not two different things, but I just wanted to clarify that, all right? So now what we will do is we will use an, uh, this notation and compute it. So the expected value, again, is called the mean or average. And we will interchangeably use these three words. Sometimes we call it expected value, sometimes we call it mean, sometimes we call it average. I uh, have to be very careful. Again, uh, the probability that it takes exactly one value is zero. So we can't do, it does, it's not like a value that we expect to see, okay? Okay, so let's do, so one example I'll do in great detail and I'll tell you a little bit about the other. So we saw the exponential random variable earlier and we said, the expected value of the exponential random variable is beta. In fact, what we said was that we picked the exponential random variable with, with parameter beta, where beta was the mean, okay? We are essentially going to derive that. So based from this, we this result that we had above, you directly get this step, okay? It is just by definition, the integral from negative infinite to infinite, x times little f of x times dx. But if you remember, the little f of x for the exponential distribution looks like 1 over beta e to the minus x over beta for x greater than or equal to 0, and it's equal to 0 otherwise, okay? That is when x is less than 0. So, so I have my integral split into two parts. The first part, I do a integral from negative infinite to 0. That is to denote this part. It's to x times 0 times dx, and then plus integral from 0 to infinite for this part, x times, this is little f of x, okay, times dx. So we want to show this result equals beta. Now this guy is 0 because it is x times 0, so that goes away. So what we are left with is, and I, I haven't done the calculation, I'm going to do that here, integral from 0 to infinite, x times 1 over beta e to the power minus x over beta times dx. So we want to perform this integral. Uh, the, the moment we see something like this, we are tempted to use integration by parts, which is the right thing to do. It is u uh, v, so this would be u times v, so that would be u v x times e to the power minus x over beta with a negative sign from 0 to infinite, right? If you take the derivative of the v, you get dv, so from v you get dv plus integral 0 to infinite, it's actually minus of negative v du e to the minus x over beta dx, okay? So this is minus v and then this is du, right? So we have that. Now, an important thing that we want to talk about is how we calculate this limits here, okay? The first one. Now notice that when I plug in 0, I get 0 times e to the power 0, which is 1. So therefore, 0 times 1 is 0. So that's the easy part. The infinite is a little bit more tricky, all right? So typically, uh, the way we write that down is to write this as negative x divided by e to the x over beta. And then realize that, well, if I put 
uh, if I put infinite there, numerator and denominator both will become infinite, and then I use L'Hopital's rule once, and then and then I would get, uh, I would essentially get uh, one divided. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, one divided by infinite, which is zero. So therefore, I would get the first term as zero because uh, when I plug in for infinite, I get zero. When I plug in for zero, I get zero. Therefore, it's equal to zero. The another way of thinking about this is x climbs slowly to infinite. Whereas e to the minus x over beta crashes down to zero really quick. For even tiny values of x, like four and five, uh, e to the negative x over beta would be crashing down to zero. Uh, so you know, so so the growth of x is much slower than uh, the decay of x e to the minus x over beta. So therefore, the product is zero. You can think of it in either ways. Now the other part plus integral from zero to infinite e to the minus x over beta dx. We want to compute that. Well, if you look at this, this is a straightforward integral, negative beta e to the minus x over beta because take the derivative of this, you get, you get this quantity. So this from 0 to infinite, when I plug in infinite, I get 0, when I plug in 0, I get 1 and I get beta, uh, which is exactly this beta. All right, so this is how we derive this expression. Similar fashion, but much harder is to show that the normal random variable x, if you compute it, you need to do integration by substitution. A nice little substitution will give me this result. Now, we had already seen this result earlier. We already said that the mean of this random variable is mean, median, and mode are all equal to mu. We said that earlier. So, you know, we're going to use that exact same result right here. So, we get that result. Okay. Now, we move on to the next item, which is called variance. The variance of a continuous random variable, much like the discrete, is the difference of x from its expected value, square that and take the expected value of that, which in other words is the expected value of x square minus the quantity expected value of x, the whole square. Again, we write that down and we will see this again in the next slide as the integral from negative infinite to infinite. This is the expected value of x squared. And this is the uh, the usual expect value of x, the whole square. So, how do we go about doing that? Well, uh, we will see a little example. But before that, I do want to say that the standard deviation as a quantity is just the square root of the variance. Now, this by definition is always true as discrete or continuous. So that doesn't change. Okay. All right. Now, for the exponential case, I will not do the calculation like I did before. For the exponential case, if I want to compute the variance, I first write this down. So this is the expected value of x square, like it's like so, minus beta square, which is the expected value of x the whole square. So I go through the integral. So this guy becomes zero, and then this one I need to do integration by parts two times. When I do integration by parts, I do integration by parts twice. And I highly recommend that you do this if you've not done it before. Perform the integration by parts two times, and you should get the answer as two times beta squared. Once you get the two times beta squared, subtract off of beta squared, giving you beta squared. So notice that the expected value of x equals the square root of the variance of x for exponential distribution. This is a very special distribution whose mean and standard deviation are equal. However, a random variable such as the normal distribution, that is not the case. And we, we have seen this normal before. The normal distribution basically has a variance of sigma squared. We saw that before. And it should not be surprising. You can again carry over the integral little bit more tricky than the exponential. Of course, all these results are also available online. You could look at Khan Academy. You could look at several sites uh, online. There are many people that have derived this. So if you're not able to derive this guy or the previous uh, expected value or the uh, uh, variance here, uh, this guy, please go check uh, one of the uh, websites. They will do a great job. Now, I do want to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about it. So I'm going to go back to Octave. I'm going to do a little demo to show you how different values of sigma affect the random numbers that are generated. So now, what I'm trying to say by this is, you know, 
if we want to understand what is this whole deal of variance, okay, so the, when a random variable has higher variability, the numbers are also start to get more and more varying. So let's look at that. Uh, I'm going back to Octave. So notice that my first file is called expon.comp.m. Again, this is like MATLAB, so that's why it has a .m. Next one is the norm, comp, which we saw this. Now, the third one is what is called variance trials. So it's called var trials, V A R underscore T R I E S. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate normal random variables and I'm going to change the variance values. And as I change the variance values, we're going to see how uh, the numbers are generated and how, how varying they are, if you will. So, again, we're going to load the statistics package. This I'm going to do a lot in this course. I'm going to pick a mean of 100. So we're going to fix that. I'm not going to mess with the mean. However, I'm going to try five different standard deviation values. 2, which is very small in comparison to 100. 5, 10, 20, 30. So I'm going on increasing the standard deviation. So these are the optional values that I use for sigma. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm writing a little while loop. Well, it, this is not the best way to do this. You would normally vectorize something like this. The reason I'm showing this is much easier to explain. Um, so I'm using this method, nothing wrong with it, but you know, anyone writing a code would probably do it more efficiently than uh, what's presented here. So I'm going to have i equals 1. That means I'm going to pick the first standard deviation. Then I'll go to the second, third, fourth, and fifth. So I say while i is smaller than the size of this. So if you want to play around with this and put a much larger value, let's say you go from 1 to uh, let's say 100 or something like that and see how the numbers look like. You're, by all means, you are welcome to do so and uh, then it will pick the appropriate size of the uh, vector. So now I go until that, I, since it is less than, I go until that plus 1. So it, it basically what it does is right now it tells me that less than or equal to 6. So less than 6, so it goes from 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. What it does is it uses that value 2, 5, 10, 20 and 30 as the standard deviation and computes normal random uh, variables. It generates random normal random variables with this mean and this standard deviation. It generates exactly 10 of them. So we can see them on the screen and it keeps doing this one by one, i equals i plus 1. It does till 5 and then it stops. Okay. Now, so notice this is what the while loop is doing about. It just goes on incrementing this value. So the first time it picks 2, then it picks 5, then it picks 10, then it picks 20, then it picks 30. Okay? So let's see how this works out. So this is called VAR underscore TRIES. Okay? So let's do VAR, VAR underscore TRIES. Now these numbers might be a little small. You'll have to squint a little bit. I don't find an easy way to increase the size of this. So notice that when the standard deviation is 2, the numbers are all huddled around 100, which is the mean. The largest is probably 105, the smallest is 98 something. Uh, and when S is 5, when the standard deviation becomes larger, notice how the numbers are. Now they go a little bit more away from 100. Now the numbers are all the way from 97 to 104. I realize that you you randomly got a larger number here, but typically you see the range here has increased. When s equals 10, the variability goes even more. There are numbers from 79 all the way to 105. And then when you pick 20, now you see the numbers start getting even wider. Uh, and uh, you, you start from 70. In this case, the specific example, now you tried another side. Let me just do this one more time. You tried this again. Uh, you will see that you get a different uh, set than we did before. So you look at it here, when S is 2, now the numbers are going from 97 to about 103. When S is 5, uh, it, it, uh, I think the numbers are going all the way to 106 something uh, and as small. So every time it gives you 10 different random numbers sampled from that distribution and notice how the numbers are getting, getting wider, farther away from 100 as the standard deviation increase. So when S is 20, you see numbers that are close to 120 and numbers as small as uh, 79. So when it's 30, again, you would see numbers that are over 130, so 135 and as small as 659. Okay? So the variability kind of goes up. So as the variance goes up, the numbers become farther away from 100. That's what I wanted to make sure that is that these things are clear at your end. All right. So I am um, going back to this uh, 
the presentation. So now let us go on and uh, the last item in this uh, particular topic is the expected value of a function of a random variable. So, so far we just saw the expected value of a random variable x and then we also saw one special function. So, let us come back to the continuous random variable with CDF f of x. We want to compute the expected value of some function of x okay? uh, and I will, I will give you an example. So, for we have seen this expected value of x squared. So, this is not just the expected value of x but the expected value of x squared. The way we compute that is to take the x squared and multiply it by this. Now, in general, this x squared could be any other function. Let me give you another example. We will see this kind of a function a lot. Okay? We will see this type of a function in this course. Okay? Function. We will see this type of function in this course. Expected value of the maximum of x comma s. So, basically, what you do is whatever function is here, you write down here. Okay, maximum of x comma s times df of x. So this part always stays the same. Okay. Now this is interesting because the maximum of x and s. Now th in this case x is less than or equal to s, and in this one x is greater than or equal to s, and all these values. So, so all here since x is less than or equal to x, maximum of x and s is s, and here the maximum of x and s is x that is because of this because x is always bigger than or equal to s in this range okay in this range i should say and in this range it's always less than or equal to s so therefore i could write this down as s times df of x uh, plus the integral s to infinite x times df of x so i can nicely decompose it this way more generically if i want to compute the expected value of a function g of x g is any function could be any, just about any function uh, I could write that down as integral. So, we did exactly the same thing. This instead of uh, computing. So, we saw x squared. We saw maximum of x comma s. These are two examples. I could have any other function. I plug it in here, multiply by df of x. It will give you the value. Now, we would not use a lot of this in this course except for this one particular guy and that is the reason I decided to use this. All right. So, this brings us to the end of this topic. Thank you.